Hello, I'm Matt Reynolds, editor of Packaging World Magazine, back with another edition of Take 5. A couple of weeks ago, I sat down with Paul Jenkins, managing director of the Pack Hub in the UK, for a joint webinar discussing sustainability as it applies to e-commerce packaging. You can access the whole webinar in the link below, uh, but we addressed a couple of interesting questions while we were talking. The first was a look at the bigger picture, asking us where we thought e-commerce packaging is going and how it's changing. I think I remember Paul made some interesting points, so let's listen to that portion of the webinar. And, and one thing we've noticed in this, we, just a few slides ago, we were looking at the difference between um, the Curry Dr. Pepper's uh, coffee pods in a carton versus in a SIAC overbox. And that's really a question of where packaging is going, because currently, um, no matter what the product is, it's packaged for retail first. And then if it, it ultimately becomes part of the D2C or uh, e-commerce channel, only then will a secondary package or, or overbox be applied. So the question is, what's packaging gonna look like in a few years? And I'll, I'll open that up to you, Paul, and I've got a few thoughts on my own. Yeah, I, I've, always, I've always thought that there is room in the market to, uh, to have more e-commerce specific um, pack formats. You know, For example, if you walk down a, a supermarket aisle and uh, down a cereal um, channel and, and your, your, your eyes are drawn to a, a cornflakes box which says buy me it has 30 percent off flashes it has things that are there to entice you to buy it at the point of sale in a bricks and mortar outlet that same box if you ordered online is delivered to you to your home and my my, my contention is that will one day there will be a, a specific a cornflakes box for example that doesn't have the those um, that messaging because the, the, the sale is is on a computer screen or, or, or a, a, a mobile phone. So I just think there is room to, to have more specific um, packaging for the e-commerce channel, particularly as it's just getting bigger and bigger. And one day the e-commerce channel will one day be bigger than the bricks and mortar uh, channel. So you know, at what point does that become the the dominant pack format? I, I don't know. Uh, I just think that there is an option, an opportunity to, to, to move more in that direction. Absolutely, I agree. Um, optimizing a package specifically for the channel that it's going in is, is one route that folks are going in. Um, the, the drawback there is that means you would have to have two packaging lines. You would have to have one line that's running those cornflakes, yeah. traditional, um, retail ready, um, uh, zero, I mean, the zero moment of truth of purchase there is when I'm in a cereal aisle and I'm deciding between the you know, the, the healthy Cheerios on one side and the, you know, Cocoa Puffs on the other. So that's when I'm making the decision. But when I'm doing, making that decision online, I'm not looking at a cereal box necessarily. There's other cues, there's other indicators that are making me, um, are pushing me towards that purchase. So, so again, that requires two totally different pack styles. One that's required to handle the rough and tumble e-commerce channel uh, and all the touches that are, you know, from distribution center to fulfillment center, all the way down to the last mile, last meter on my porch. Uh, versus retail or I'm picking something up and bringing it home doesn't require nearly as robust of a packaging system. So from a brand's perspective, as you mentioned, at what point are we going to optimize for both? But again, that the drawback it means a whole new packaging line, a whole lot more new machinery and two di divergent lines. I think it's interesting to think about an omnichannel pack that could potentially mm -hmm. accomplish both. It could be optimized for, you know, it's not gonna be 100% optimized for either one, but rather reach a happy medium where, where it will be a robust enough pack to handle um, the e-commerce channel, um, maybe more robust than is necessary for, for the retail environment, but regardless, the brand or the CPGC savings and only requiring one single packaging line, one package fits all for all channels. So I think that's a potential direction, either optimizing for uh, each channel or actually optimizing for a single pack that fits all are two potential directions that I see this going. Um, Paul, anything else or should I dive into the secondary question? Um, a second question asked us about the hurdle of consumer education when it comes to e-commerce packaging and having to train consumers to properly dispose of materials that they receive uh, that are all recyclable D2C packaging. Paul and I tackled that question and how to delve into how brands are using QR codes to learn about their customers' behaviors and optimize their packaging processes around those behaviors. Let's listen. Let's dive into the, the next question.
So I think anybody who uh, was following along this entire presentation noticed the number of QR codes along the way. And that's just an indicator of, of how much consumer uh, messaging and, and education is required. And I think a grand example of that is the, recycle, uh, the reusable packaging. We ended that our last slide. Um, there's these systems or starter kits where you get you know, a larger robust package with durable, maybe it's aluminum, maybe it's a, a heavier plastic uh, you know, spray bottle or, or, or hand soap dispenser. Um, those are meant to be refilled over time by much more lightweight uh, refills are perhaps concentrated instead of you know shipping water. Uh, you you use you know concentrated material where you add your own you add your own uh, water at the very last mile when you're about to refill that that durable container. So the, the thing is, when you're buying something from a sh from a retail shelf, you that's all the mental work that a consumer has to do in order to be able to use that product. The reusable re durable systems require a lot more consumer education. So the question becomes, you know, is this viable? Are consumers going to be able to, to, to latch on to this as, a, 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 as the system of the future? Paul, I'll open that up to you to begin. Yeah, so I think um, getting vital feedback from consumers is going to be key to, to refine and change and modify the reusable uh, packaging systems. Uh, you know, that, that is going to be an absolute key part of, uh, part of this as a, as a as a challenge really um reusable packaging is all about we've, we've a capitalist society is about convenience uh we've had it drum down our throats for the last 30 or 40 years that in you know, a brand a is more convenient than brand b and and reusable and refillable packaging doesn't necessarily tick those boxes so i think there's a big educational piece required to one, understand what consumers really want and what they think, but also to, to help them, guide them to, to actually accept that this new solution may be slightly less convenient, but actually it's better for the environment and better for, for, the, for, for the future world. So uh, there's a lot of, lot of work to, to continue really to, to, to understand um, a lot more about consumer behavior and, and what they think in, in the refillable space. Yeah, I think you make a great point. I mentioned consumer education being so uh, necessary. It's not just consumer education via those QR codes, it's brand education and distributor and retail education, getting that uh, feedback as to how consumers are using their products and then being able to meet them in the middle uh, and create a product that's more optimized for the user experience, not just trying to force uh, consumers to 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 adapt to whatever the initial 1.0 version of that uh, recyclable reusable uh, format is. So it's really a you know brands meeting consumers in the middle. Consumer education piece is huge, but also the brand education piece to continue to optimize these systems. Because ultimately, I think the, the threshold or the barrier here is going to be having a product that is is as or at almost as simply used as the predecessor. So the more work we add for a consumer to be able to either recycle or constantly refill over time, the, the less likely these things are going to um, have legs over time. So uh, again, it's the brands iterating 2.0, 3.0 that are uh, that are creating better versions of these packaging systems that create less friction. Friction is kind of a key word here. Um, and reducing friction over time to actually be something that's comparable to existing systems, existing retail systems now. 